Hello and welcome. We start this broadcast with the situation along the Ukraine's borders, which remains tense, as Russia is dispatching more of its troops and ammunition towards Ukraine. The Western Alliance is bolstering their arms in Eastern Europe along the borders of Ukraine. In the latest, Denmark has sent four fighter jets to Lithuania to strengthen NATO's operations. Four F-16 fighter jets have arrived at the Shulai Air Base, according to the Lithuanian Defense Ministry. NATO allies will be sending an augmentation detachment to the NATO air policing mission and will further strengthen the security of its eastern allies, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania and Bulgaria. Meanwhile, the soldiers guarding the borders of Ukraine are feeling the intensifying heat. Army soldiers at the front line in eastern Ukraine are holding their ground. Civilian employees of essential services are taking part in military training. The exercises were led by former Ukrainian paratroopers and veterans in partnership with this city government. And authorities have lined up training sessions at the private training ground outside Viv once a week. Now, the threat of an invasion has breached into Ukrainian schools. Schools in Kiev are holding bomb threat drills for students. Children can be seen learning about mines and bombs. Students sat at these emergency drills for cases of bomb threats. And the police bomb sniffer dogs have entered schools to help children with emergency situations. New satellite images have been released showing tanks and military vehicles gathered at a training area in Russia, which is a few hours' drive from the border of Ukraine. The vehicles appear to be stationed at the Poganovo training area, which is one of the key locations for military drills in southwest Russia. More tanks and armored vehicles were seen leaving a military base for drills in the southern Rostov region. Russia has started making combat readiness inspections in its southern military district, which borders the Ukraine. Now, these inspections involve more than 6,000 troops. 6,000 more troops for new military drills involving near Ukraine and within the Crimea region. The Defense Ministry has published videos showing units of motorized rifle division moving towards Russia's Rostov region, which borders Ukraine. Russia has sent two battalions of S-400 surface-to-air missile systems to Belarus. Both nations will hold joint military exercises called the Allied Resolve to repel external aggression. Russia's Su-35 fighter jets were seen landing and taxiing on Belarusian tarmacs today. The latest video shows Belarusian military welcoming Russian pilots with bread and There's more. Another video published by the Russian military shows fighter jets being relocated to Belarusian airfields. Russia has sent two battalions of these surface air missiles. There is one more thing. Over 20 warships have entered the Black Sea. Videos released by the Defense Ministry show warships with radar transmitters on maneuvers in the Black Sea. Now, according to Moscow, the presence of these massive warships is a part of scheduled naval exercises in the Mediterranean. Our correspondent Susan Tehrani has sent us this report from New York. Listen in. Western powers have upped their stakes against Russia as the Ukrainian crisis escalates. The United States, along with some of its Western allies, are now mulling a set of crippling sanctions against Russia, including some against Russian President Vladimir Putin himself. However, it's not yet clear how those sanctions would even look like. And the Kremlin has made clear that any sanctions leveled against the president of Russia would have no effect in Vladimir Putin's decision making on whether or not to invade Ukraine. On that money end of things, the United States and Western powers are thinking of cutting Russia off from the SWIFT banking system. Again, Russia has played down that notion, uh, saying that it might cause some ill effects to the Russian economy. It's not a big deal. Uh, the Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev said that there will be no fatal catastrophe in the event of Russia's disconnection from SWIFT. He said international bank cards will continue to operate within the country, though there will be certain difficulties with transfers abroad. But there are different 
different ways to do that. However, this will damage Russia's economy in the short and long term. Back in 2014, the United States was thinking of taking this quote-unquote nuclear option against Russia. It decided against it. Back then, Russian President Vladimir Putin said if the U.S. goes ahead and cuts Russia off from the SWIFT banking system, it would indicate and amount to quote an act of war. We'll see what happens now. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.